it's triggering a lot of unreleased pain, yeah. repressed anger, guilt, and suffering that a lot of women have had. So we were sitting in the service and I leaned up toward him and I said, I've just been touched to give a million dollars. So as... So, you know how OPR Winfrey's been popping up all over the headlines lately? Yeah, it's been quite the whirlwind, and unfortunately, not for the best reasons. Rumors and gossip have been swirling around her like a tornado, and it seems like she's been catching a lot of flack lately. But you know what they say, when it rains, it pours. And it looks like OPR might be ready to throw down the gauntlet and say, hey, if I'm going down, I'm taking you all with me. Word on the street is that OPR might have dropped some major bombshells about some big names in the industry. And we're not talking about just any old celeb, here, we're talking about heavy hitters like Tyler Perry and T.D. Jakes. The rumor mill is buzzing with speculation that OPR spilled the tea on some high-profile shenanigans involving these two. Now, when it comes to Tyler, it might not be all that surprising. I mean, we've all heard the whispers about some shady things that have followed him like a shadow. But T.D. Jakes, the man who's practically a household name in the world of pastors? Now that's a plot twist nobody saw coming. But here's the kicker. If OPR is supposedly the one dropping these bombshells, you know there's gotta be some truth to it. I mean, she's not exactly known for spreading fake news, right? Anyways, let's get into it. Now, OPR, Tyler, and TD Jakes go way back. They've all crossed paths on OPR show. And let's not forget, OPR and TD Jakes are tight. Remember when she spilled her guts on TD Jakes's show back in 2016? Yeah, it aired on her own network too. She opened up about the rocky start of her own venture in 2011 and how Tyler Perry came to her rescue. So, if there's anyone who might know some juicy gossip about Tyler and TD Jakes, it's OPR. PR, right? So, let's dive into the drama. On December 21st, 2023, T.D. Jakes went viral for all the wrong reasons. Why, you ask? Well, it all started with this TikTok user dropping some major bombshells about him. Apparently, R&B singer Cassie Ventura went to the FBI with some accusations against Diddy, claiming he did some pretty awful stuff during their relationship that lasted a decade. After Cassie settled her beef with Bad Boy Records boss Diddy, this TikTok user dropped some bombshell claims. Apparently, Cassie handed more stuff to the FBI, like tapes from Diddy's wild parties and even Kim Porter's secret phone. Now, here's the jaw dropper. The TikTok user says there's an email that points fingers at Diddy's close buddy, Pastor T.D. Jakes. Yeah, the same man who officiated Kim Porter's funeral. According to the TikToker, there's this clip floating around where some dude spills the beans that Cassie dished out tapes showing Diddy's wild parties, involving not just T.D. Jakes but a bunch of other big shots, and things allegedly got pretty scandalous like sleeping with multiple men at the soirees. Insane, right? Okay, so we all know T.D. Jakes, the big deal behind the Potter House Church in Dallas, right? He's like the top Christian preacher in the U.S., rubbing shoulders with celebs, especially Diddy. Time Magazine even crowned him America's Best Preacher, and the New York Times called him one of the nation's most influential and mesmerizing preachers. But hold up, things are getting weird. Diddy and Jakes, who've been tight, are now in the spotlight after Diddy got hit with lawsuits for alleged misconduct. Diddy's been singing praises about Jakes, crediting him for helping out during some dark times. In 2021, they even joined forces to bring Jakes's sermons to Revolt TV. Now, with this TikTok video claiming Diddy's ex, Cassie, spilled the beans on some shady stuff, saying Jakes was up to no good with young folks at Diddy's parties. Total head scratcher for real and the internet's going nuts over it. The email says, So I want to put you up on game on the real nature of Diddy and Bishop Jake's relationship. But first, let's understand that Bishop Jake's is not of God. He is undoubtedly a Freemason, and so was Diddy. And I say he was because it seems as though he has been stripped of his protection, privileges, and power. But make no mistake about it, his soul is still spoken for by the devil. He will never be able to fend off or escape that harsh reality. Anyways, I'm told Diddy and Jake's mask the real nature of their relationship. According to the email, back in June 1983, Kim Porter claimed T.D. Jake's was accused of supposedly messing with a guy just a year after tying the knot with his wife. The word is, the whole thing got hushed up somehow. Fast forward to 1999, when a guy threatened to spill the beans on Jake's, mysteriously, he vanished. Pastor Blank spills that the dude got paid off to stay quiet. Two years later, the same guy turns up dead with a gunshot to the head. No names, though. This all went down at Emmanuel Temple of Faith in Smithers, West Virginia. Rumor has it folks from Jake's hometown insist he's been on the down low with guys all along, and there's even talk of some older Pastor G wording him when Jake's hits up Diddy's shindigs. Rumor has it he's throwing back massive amounts of booze and puffing on cigars in some exclusive part of the house. Now, 
just because he's in a private area that's invite only doesn't mean he's off the radar. Apparently, he's still under watch. Oh, and get this, the bishop's wife never shows up to Diddy's bashes, and word is, she's well aware of what's going down. People are saying she's questioned why she's never been on the guest list. According to Blank, Cassie's in the loop about the bishop's scandals, and Kim Porter found out through servers who spilled the beans about Diddy's wild parties. Kim was all set to spill the tea in her book. It's wild, right? But hey, gotta remember, these are just some crazy claims floating around on social media. No hard evidence. Still, that didn't stop everyone from going nuts on social platforms, and now TD Jakes is blowing up online. One person said, surprised but not surprised about TD Jakes because he was good friends with Eddie Long and birds of a feather flock. Another said, I'm glad all this stuff is hitting the fan. Time for Hollywood to finally be exposed. Now get this, there's this psychic on TikTok who apparently called all this craziness like two years back. She went on this rant about TD Jakes being a Freemason, taking occultic vows, and being in some brotherhood serving Satan as his true boss. According to her, he's using his gifts to mess with people's heads. Oh, and here's the kicker. She predicted that Jakes would be in one of the biggest scandals ever, saying he's not exactly straight, and the whole thing would be about his S orientation. 14 Prophecy is a Freemason that this man has taken occultic vows and that he is part of a brotherhood, that he is serving Satan, who is his true Lord. And the Lord said that Bishop T.D. Jakes will have one of the biggest scandals of all time in the Christian church. While there's no proof to back up the claims against Jakes, this isn't his first rodeo with controversy. Back in 2009, Jakes's son, Jermaine, got in hot water for allegedly doing some indecent stuff at Keast Park in Dallas. Fast forward to last year and there's more drama. Jakes's daughter's estranged hubby got accused of some really awful stuff with their adopted daughter. And of course, Tyler is no stranger to these kinds of rumors either. There are also rumors swirling that Tyler Perry might have slipped some cash to T.D. Jakes to keep quiet about some sketchy business. Remember that million dollar donation to T.D. Jakes Church? Well, the grapevine is saying it wasn't exactly for the Sunday collection. It might have been a hush money arrangement. For Tyler Perry, some straight guys are claiming he's pushing them into gay roles and it's messing with their jobs. So, actor and voice coach Brandon J spilled the tea on TikTok, sharing that filming just one episode of Perry's Meet the Browns was the toughest gig ever. According to Jay, a day on Perry's set is like a week's worth of shooting elsewhere. And if that's not enough, he says Perry's notorious for throwing last-minute script changes at the actors, making them memorize on the spot. Jay, who auditioned for the role of Jeffrey, a bullied high school dude, spills it all. So, get this. The actor caught on to Tyler Perry not vibing with the original script, and that meant everyone had to scramble to learn new lines on the spot, all chosen by the big boss himself. According to Jay, Perry went full-on impromptu, rewriting the entire script right there and feeding the lines to the actors. And get this, if you didn't catch on quick, Perry would drop the you're fired bomb. But it doesn't stop there. As Jay hustles to get those new lines down, Perry decides, out of the blue, that Jay's character is gonna be gay and crushing on his high High school bully. Yep, not what Jay signed up for at his audition. Perry drops the bomb like, I want Jeffrey to be gay and have a crush on his bully. Crazy, right? In the second part of the saga, Jay spills that his first reaction was to hit up his agent, who basically said, you don't have to take this if you're not cool with it. I have an entire new script with all new lines, pages and pages and pages. I have an hour to learn this stuff. My agent was like, absolutely not. If Brandon doesn't feel comfortable with playing this character, then he can walk from this because you don't have to do anything that you don't feel comfortable doing. But after some serious pondering, Jay decided it was a chance he didn't want to miss out on. So, despite Perry throwing in a last-minute twist and making the character gay, Jay went ahead and played the role. But wait, it gets darker. There's another name in the mix of supposed victims of Tyler Perry, and this time it's Christian Keys. The guy didn't hold back. He went on Instagram with a teary video, dishing about some serious power abuse in the biz. Get this, he spilled about a high-powered dude who supposedly bragged about having a bunch of young black men under his wing. Names were kept under wraps, but you know the internet's on full detective mode. Now, here's where it gets wild. Christian Keys has been rolling with Tyler Perry for nearly two decades, from the days of Diary of a Mad Black Woman in 2005 to the recent TV series All the Queen's Men. So naturally, everyone's connecting the dots and throwing around speculations. Is Tyler Perry the mystery man in Christian's story? But hey, let's keep it real. What we're hearing is all speculation at this point, and only Christian Keys has the real lowdown on who that powerful dude 
is. He's been dropping hints, mentioning he's got the receipts, and he's even passed them on to the police. So we might just get the 411 on this mystery very soon. Now let's talk about the Medea style of comedy. It's hilarious, no doubt, but some folks say there's more to it. Dave Chappelle on OPR show threw out a question. Why do we see so many black actors creating and playing female characters? When I see that they put every black man in the movies in a dress at some point in their career, I'll be connecting them down. Like why all these brothers have to wear a dress? So, Dave Chappelle spilled some tea about how he got asked to rock a dress in a movie alongside Martin Lawrence. He wasn't feeling it and told the producers it wasn't relevant to the scene, but they kept pushing him, saying all the greats did it and got rewarded. Dave just didn't vibe with it, not because wearing a dress is an issue on its own, but because he felt the industry was trying to corner black artists into doing whatever it took for success. They kept hounding him until they figured out he wouldn't budge. Dave revealed this whole experience was an eye-opener. It took being told to wear a dress for him to connect the dots and realize this wasn't just his struggle. Lots of other black men had been asked to do the same. Martin Lawrence rocked it in Big Mama's house, Eddie Murphy pulled it off in the Nutty Professor series, and Jamie Foxx left a mark with his unforgettable ugly Wanda on In Living Color. Then you've got the Wyans brothers trying their hand at it with White Chick. Oh, and we can't forget the less successful Juana Man. Yeah, some would rather forget that one. In the mix of all this, Tyler Perry takes the cake. He's not just known for his entertainment game, but has major influence, even in right-wing evangelical circles. His Medea franchise, talk about significant success and acclaim in the entertainment world. Now, Tyler Perry fired back at Dave Chappelle in an interview saying, look, Chappelle is one of the smartest guys I've ever seen, not just in comedy, but in deep thinking. If that's how it rolls in Hollywood, cool, but that ain't my story. Nobody told me to wear that dress, but me. It's my two billion billion dollar franchise and it's always been my choice. I've done 19 movies since then, all by my own call. Maybe it's different for others, but for me, it's like putting on a work uniform. I'm not a guy who enjoys wearing a dress, but as an actor, it's a costume. It's like someone going to Walmart, you put on your uniform. For me, it's about putting on that uniform, going out, making people laugh, lifting them up, and giving them some encouragement. That's how I see it. And then there's Tyler Perry's casting choices and how he portrays characters in his movies. No hiding the fact that black-skinned actors are often cast as the villains in his flicks. Take Steve Harris in one of Perry's classics, Diary of a Mad Black Woman. He's playing Charles McCarter, a successful lawyer who turns out to be far from the ideal hubby. Shockingly, he drops the bomb on his wife about another woman in his life and then proceeds to treat her like dirt, eventually kicking her out. If you've been tuning into Tyler's movies and shows, you might have noticed a trend. A lot of the not-so-nice characters tend to be really abusive towards women. It's a concerning thing that's got people raising their voices. A Fall from Grace, where Crystal Fox plays Grace Waters. She's been through the ringer with her ex-husband's affair and decides to take another shot at love with Maycod Brooks. But surprise, surprise, as she gets closer to him, she uncovers some seriously dark secrets. Grace's journey takes a twisted turn into love, betrayal, and the aftermath of people's choices. Now, Tyler Perry's movies, like Acrimony, always stir up discussions on Twitter and other social platforms. Some folks call out Perry for repeatedly showing the struggles of black women dealing with men's actions in his films. On the flip side, others say he's just shedding light on real-life issues that many black women can relate to. So, you know, debates are flying, highlighting how Perry's storytelling gets people talking about some pretty important stuff. One fan said, when will Tyler Perry make black women happy? They are always sad, victimized, and abused in his movies. Why doesn't Tyler Perry want to see black women happy, prospering, and thriving? While another said, I keep wondering why people complain about the pattern of Tyler Perry's movies. He's using his movies to hammer on what black women go through. How's that wrong? Is it activism? Why are you complaining? Now, let's get into the scoop on Monique's beef with the big shots in the industry. She spilled the tea recently on the Club Shay Shay podcast about how Tyler Perry cost her and her family tens of millions of dollars over a rumor he started about her. She recounted the whole situation, saying that Tyler told her he'd never do anything to hurt her, but then later admitted to starting a false rumor that she was difficult to work with. Monique didn't hold back, expressing her frustration and disappointment, especially after Tyler's initial denial. This drama started way back in 2009 when Monique starred in Precious, a movie produced by OPR and Tyler Perry and directed by Lee Daniels. The real beef kicked off when OPR and Tyler decided Monique should hit the press circuit for the film without any paycheck. Monique wasn't having it and straight up said, nah, not in my contract. According to Monique, she only got a measly 50K for the whole movie, which was barely enough. Now they wanted her to jet around the world promoting the film for free? 
not on Monique's watch. But OPR and Tyler didn't take her refusal well at all. Instead, they started trashing her reputation in the industry, spinning a narrative about her being difficult to work with. Monique spilled the tea, saying Tyler Perry told her, you may want to consider promoting this film because if you get nominated for an Oscar, your next film is three to five million dollars. And if you win it, your next film is six to eight million dollars. Monique was like, hold up, I'm a black woman. Where are they paying those salaries, brother? She straight up told Tyler, I can't work for free. I've done what I was supposed to do. I can't go overseas and do this for free. Their back and forth continued, with Tyler saying he doesn't believe in giving money away for free, and Monique firing back, I don't believe in working for free. So we on the same page? It's a classic case of clash in values, and Monique wasn't backing down. He goes on about his spill, you know. I said, well, listen, you can write me the check for me to go overseas. I don't care where the money comes from, but I'm not gonna do it for free. I don't believe in giving money away for free. I said, I don't believe in working for free, so we're on the same page. She also claimed Tyler Perry allegedly went the extra mile to mess with her acting gig. According to Monique, it all went down after she turned down a request to fly to France for the Cannes Film Festival, tied to promoting the movie Precious. So, check it. The movie studio initially asked her to jet off to France, but Monique, with her busy schedule as a talk show host, comedian, and family woman, respectfully declined. They tried to sweeten the deal by offering to upgrade her hotel room, but she and her husband stuck to their guns, saying, nah, we're gonna spend this time with our family. She said, OPR, I'm doing a talk show. I'm doing a comedy tour. I have a husband and I have babies. I have a little bit of downtime and I am going to take advantage of it. So, I'm not going anywhere because I'm not obligated to go anywhere. I've done my part. So, we mutually agreed to disagree. That was it. Next thing I know, I am considered difficult and hard to work with when the third call came and they asked, what's it gonna take to get Monique to France? Her husband straight up asked, is there a number associated with it? That's when they dropped the bomb that they would never pay for anyone to do promotions for a movie. Monique revealed she was paid a mere $50,000 for Precious, and it wasn't about the money, she signed up to do it with her friend. The interviewer dug in, suggesting she needed the money to feed her family and pay bills, and Monique responded, I think that's what America says. We all say, I can't do it for free. She explained that when the movie studio refused to pay for her can appearance, they didn't make a fuss. But then the report started flying, painting Monique as demanding and difficult. The whole thing boiled down to a simple request that they understood couldn't be met. But suddenly, Monique found herself labeled, and that's where the drama kicked in. Good, because what people didn't know was, I was paid $50,000 to do the movie Precious. And it really wasn't about the money, and I'm not complaining because I signed up to do it with my friend. Says we can't set a precedent and pay you to do this. We didn't have an issue with them. Okay. But that's when the reports came that now Monique is being demanding and she's being difficult. Monique doesn't stop there. She spilled some more tea during her Apollo set, saying that the term blackballed isn't quite right in her book. In her words, she said, what is that black D connected to? That black man? So no, I was not blackballed. I was whiteballed by some black D's who have no balls. Thank you, Mr. Lee Daniels. Thank you, Mr. Tyler Perry. Thank you, Miss OPR Winfrey. She continued, See, I know they like to say, Monique, you talk too mother much. It would K me not to say the real S. You are not paying me equally. You are not treating me fairly so you can suck my D if I had one. Media stories start popping up, painting Monique as difficult to work with. Suddenly, no one wanted to cast her, despite her winning an Oscar for her role in Precious. Imagine seeing all your hard work go down the drain. Monique started putting two and two together, realizing someone was out to get her. In a recent chat with The Hollywood Reporter, she spilled the beans that Precious director Lee Daniels admitted she got blackballed for not playing the game. Monique's even called out OPR and Tyler Perry, asking for an apology that, as far as we know, is still MIA. She went on to talk about how during her conversation with Shannon, she referenced an interview he did with Kat where he admitted to letting people lie in his face because he didn't know if they were lying or not. Monique made it clear that she wanted Shannon to hear Tyler's own words, so she sent him the audio recording of their conversation. And let me tell you, it wasn't a walk in the park. Monique revealed that she recorded the conversation legally, which she emphasized was crucial for her as a black woman facing off against someone as powerful as Tyler Perry. She explained that having the audio proof was a game changer, as it prevented her from being dismissed or ignored. Monique didn't mince words about the impact of Tyler's actions on her and her family. She stressed that the lie Tyler spread cost them a staggering amount of money, leaving them in a tough spot financially. It was a tough pill to swallow, and Monique didn't hesitate to share the weight 
afraid of the consequences of Tyler's actions. Well, isn't this just wild, folks? But just like the rumors claim, it seems OPR really is not planning on taking all the heat solo. But hey, what are your thoughts on this whole situation? Drop them in the comments below, and we'll catch you in the next video.